just two days ago, Dianne Feinstein appeared to have no memory of the fact that she had been absent from the Senate for multiple months. I'm not 100% sure about that. There is an interpretation that she was just being salty. But I understand the concerns about what she actually said. And coming out of that interaction, some of those who've been calling for her to step down from her position as California Senator are reiterating that with a friend of the show, Representative Ro Khanna saying, I have a lot of respect for Senator Feinstein and am wishing her the best in her return and recovery. That being said, I stand by my call for her to resign. And I appreciate that. It's very easy, I think, maybe to say it when she's gone. But once she's back, well, I guess we'll just let her be led around the halls of the Senate. So some people appear to be backing off from the pressure, but not Ro Khanna, and I appreciate that. But you might notice that there isn't a ton of pressure, certainly coming from people other than progressives. Where are the establishment Democrats who should be wanting the establishment Democrat President Biden to get as much as he can out of that period? She is standing between him and that, so why don't they, why aren't they bothered by that? Well, Politico has some pretty interesting reporting that adds a new wrinkle to this story. Did you know that Feinstein's primary caregiver, not in a medical sense, but in terms of helping her out in her job, is Nancy Pelosi's daughter? I had not known that. So not only did Nancy Kareen Prouda escort Feinstein around Capitol Hill last week, she was again at her side yesterday, helping aides surround the senator in a Capitol hallway as a reporter tried to speak to her, so sort of corralling her. Multiple people familiar with the arrangement say it's the it's only the most visible part of a quiet but critical role the Pelosi family has played in helping to take care of the ailing senator, both when she's in Washington as well as back in San Francisco. Now, why would this potentially matter? It's noteworthy. Here is why it might potentially matter. And it's not about the future career of Dianne Feinstein at the end of the day. It's about whoever is gonna come after her, which has been part of this conversation for months. But this makes that conversation, I think, take on a new significance. So Pelosi, you need to know, has endorsed Representative Adam Schiff to be her successor. That is Pelosi's longtime protege, former hand-picked House Intelligence Committee Chair. She wants him to take over. Now, he's already incredibly well known in California. He has a $15 million cash advantage over his nearest competitor. But here's the issue. If she were to use her position to do the ethical thing, which is to ask Feinstein to step aside so the Democrats could get the job done, well then, that would we would not immediately get Adam Schiff. What we would get is whoever Gavin Newsom picked. And Gavin Newsom has already promised that he would put a black woman into that position. It is believed that it could potentially be Representative Barbara Lee. Although Gavin Newsom is a slippery little devil, so I don't know why people are assuming that's necessarily the way it would go. And then whoever that is, whether it's Barbara Lee or a, a different uh, black female politician here in California, would be then running for reelection as the incumbent. They would have more name recognition. And that significantly imperils the chance of Adam Schiff to take over. Now, of course, that also represents that Nancy Pelosi is not interested in increasing diversity in this Senate seat. She just wants Adam Schiff because she likes Adam Schiff. Um, But if that is the reason that is being given for establishment Democrats to not put pressure on her, so we get stuck with her, a senator who seems barely able to do the job, barely able to say what day it is, and could still be risking the judicial nominations of President Biden, then that is that is really that's d- distressing. I will say, Miranda, what do you think? Yeah, uh, for a woman who seems to not know where she is or when she is a lot of the time and can't be let out of her office unsupervised, um, she has no business making decisions for the American people uh, or you know anyone else really. I personally think, um, and so I think it's I think it could be. The Barbara Lee thing, I think there's definitely some validity to that. But I also think that very related to the Santos story, if you require someone to step down because of inadequacy or inability to do their job properly, then that sets a precedent, right? And a precedent that they they don't want and they don't want to give up any seats, they don't want to give up any power. I mean, you can make the argument that Biden's quite old and sometimes it seems like maybe he doesn't quite know where he is um, or what he is doing. And so I think that it, there could be validity to either one of those things, um, but also just just give me Barbara Lee. Just give us Barbara Lee. That's all we really want. Um, and I think it's a shame that this woman is, however old, and cannot like live the rest of her time. Like she should retire. Live the rest. Just take it off. Just live the rest of your time in retirement. 
uh, on the beach somewhere, you know, just relaxing. You don't need to be casting yeah. votes or whoever is, you know, holding your hand over the button, <laughs> casting yeah. the votes for you. Yeah, I like having obviously lived through uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Like my gut is saying, simply waiting to give Adam Schiff a better chance seems like the worst case scenario. But is that really the worst case scenario? Perhaps in the current political context, we need to get more creative. Uh, they are wasting just enough time for Gavin Newsom to be beaten for re-election by Scott Bayow or something, and then he chooses some Republican to take the seat. I don't know. That's my fear. Um, we don't know for sure how much of well, this is political speculation. I mean, the relationship is there between the Pelosi's and Dianne Feinstein. Uh, we know that they deny it. Uh, Aaron Bennett, spokesman for Pelosi, says anyone who knows Senator Feinstein knows that her service in the Senate is entirely her own decision, and Speaker Pelosi would never suggest otherwise. That doesn't mean anything. By the way, like the Adam Schiff thing. I'm not even saying that that has anything to do with Dianne Feinstein's thinking. I don't think Dianne Feinstein necessarily cares at all who takes over for her. I think she cares about her. Um, she has main character syndrome, that's what I think. But that could totally be why Pelosi is not putting pressure on her. And maybe the, part, the pressure would be irrelevant. Maybe if Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden and all of the centrist Democrats or whatever were to constantly be attacking Feinstein to step down, maybe she wouldn't do it anyway. But at least they'd be on her side and they're not doing that. They're not doing that. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.